Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Brother Crumper Show with Bible Church South, Sunday morning Bible study. And uh, of course, from the beginning of the year, we uh, focused on hermeneutics, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the method of having a rational way to approach your Bible. And of course, we'll be using the King James Bible, which we think is the most reliable source of the information we got. Concerning people who call themselves up in, a, in, a, in an organization called Covenant Theology or, or Reformed Theology, which is not biblical. And these people claim that uh, there's only one church, only one gospel. And, and this is just such a such a such a such a plain departure from the word of God until so it's it's difficult. You have to be taught to not believe the Bible. You have to be taught to not believe the Bible. Because if you just simply read what God has said, the information he's given to the world concerning his plan and purpose for the world, it's impossible. I mean it's difficult to accept. European Christianity. And let's look at uh, Numbers 23, 19. That will be the foundation of, that has been the foundation of this study of how to study the Bible. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, shall he not do it? Had he spoken, shall he not make it good? We have on the board, I have on the board, if you believe that verse, and you would be most comfortable moving from Genesis to Revelation. And of course, 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction. So we have two verses that we would like to pursue this information to, to, to actually expose this uh, untruth uh, that God speaks about in Romans 1, 25. I change the truth of God until the lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. I have on the board also but under that Numbers 23, 19 and 2 Timothy 3, 16. If these people who claim preach and teach that there's only one gospel and only one church, then that one church should have expectations in all of this information that God has laid out. Good saying to explain the purpose. Let's begin with Isaiah 45. Isaiah chapter 45. You notice on the board I have quotations. Isaiah 45, 11 through 19. The focus phrase is to be inhabited. 
God has a plan and a purpose. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven, and the earth. As you're 45, 19, starting at 19, I'm sorry, starting at 11 through 19. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. This is wonderful. Command ye me, Israel. Command ye me. Ask me questions concerning his plan and purpose. I made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all the host have I commanded. I raise him up in righteousness. I will direct his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price, nor reward, saith the Lord God of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Syrians, men of stature, shall come up unto thee, and they shall be thine. And so, Come after thee and change, and they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplications unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there's none else. There's no God. Verily thou art a God that hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed, and also confounded all of them. They shall go to confusion together. They, I mean, sorry. Go together, together that that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. The world without end. Last week we spoke of that way, that that phrase, and, and, and uh, 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 everlasting and evermore. And how can a person? Well, not how can, but people. They ignore this phrase. They don't care about this phrase forever because they say they have replaced Israel or their spiritual Israel or their grafted into Israel's program. For what purpose? For what purpose does European Christianity serve God? What purpose does the denomination serve God? What is he needed for? He's telling us his plan and purpose. He has created a people, a group of people, he calls them Israel, the nation of Israel, my sons, he tells them. 18 and continuing. But thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he made it to be inhabited. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret, in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said, Not unto the seed of Jacob, Israel, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare the things that are right. Let's compare that narrative that we just read with Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses. 26 through 28. And the Lord God said, then the Lord God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish, replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over all over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God has a plan and purpose for creating man. He says to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. He has a plan and a purpose for creating man. Let's continue. Isaiah 49.
Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 9. Listen, O hours unto me, and hearken, ye people from afar. The Lord had called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, had he made mention of my name. And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand, and he had hid me, and made me a pot of shaft, and his quiver had he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. God says unto me, unto Isaiah, Israel is his servant whom he will use <laughs> in the commentary on this verse, who he will use to glorify him. Why does he need a man-made pseudo-Christian organization to glorify him when he has chosen his own people that he's going to use to glorify him? He doesn't mention the Methodist or Baptist or Catholic in this verse. He says he's going to use O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now, said the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob again to him, who Israel to be grafted. They are gathered, and yet shall I be glor uh, glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. <laughs> Excuse me. And he said, It is a light, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, the tribes of Jacob, and to restore and preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. That thou mayest be my salvation, which is my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation hath borrowed, to a servant of rulers, to be, I mean, sorry, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and rise and arise, princes shall also worship because of the Lord that be his faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Thus said the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth. Let me back up. I will preserve thee. God says, that he will preserve these people who he has created called the nation Israel. He has, he said he's going to preserve them to establish the earth. So why does he need, well, he, he doesn't need a replacement. So there's no such thing as a replacement Israel because he's going to say, he's going to establish them to preserve, establish the earth. He doesn't need a replacement Israel. Because he's not a man and he should lie. Had he said it, shall he not do it? Had he spoken it, shall he not make it good? So evidently, a replacement with Israel, people preaching and teaching that, they don't believe God is not a man and he should lie. They don't believe that. The last verse, nine. That thou mayest be to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourself they shall feed in the ways, and their pastors shall be in all high places. Why would a person preach and teach that there's only one church, there's only one gospel? Well, the reason why you would do that is because you, you evidently don't believe that God is not a man. So you have to construct your own organization off of information that God has given to the world concerning his plan and purpose. There's no such thing as replacing Israel. If you believe that God is not a man, he shall lie. 
There's no such thing as a Baptist Methodist or Episcopalian or Apostolic. If you believe that God is not a man, you should lie. What is the purpose of man being Christian organizations? What is the purpose? What is the purpose? How? What does God need with a man being Christian organization? To carry out his purpose. When he's telling us he has an organization concerning the earth. But let's continue with this truth. There's some of these people, they're enchanted with water baptism. But God has a purpose for the water baptism being in his plan and purpose concerning the earth. Is it here 36? It, the power and simplicity of these words. The simplicity of these words. Ezekiel 36. I have on the board before we go through this now. Ezekiel 36, 21 through 25. Not for your sakes. God didn't create the nation Israel for their sake. He created the nation Israel for his plan and purpose, for his sake. But they chose to do the same thing that Adam chose to do, to have a plan and purpose for their own sake. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 21 through 25. Why does God use water baptism? But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel has profaned among the heathens whither they went. Therefore, said to the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, so if, O house of Israel. But for mine holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathens with the went. He didn't institute this ritual of water baptism for you to join the Baptist church. Or for you to be sprinkled with water in the Catholic organization. He did he created this ritual for his own sake. Not even for the nation Israel's sake. 22 to continue. Therefore, said to the house of Israel, said, Let's say the Lord, I agree, I'm not sorry, we'll, just, we'll read it again. Let's say the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathens, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathens. Which you have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, said the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathens and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. We discussed this land in the last two, three weeks. We've been talking about, well, from Genesis, it's about the land, it's about the Garden of Eden. This is about the Garden of Eden. God is going to reestablish some people in the Garden of Eden. And it's not going to be Roman Catholics. 25. Then will I clean, sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? He's going to sprinkle clean water. The method that God chooses to, 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 to carry out this ritual is irrelevant to him. But the idea is these people have to be washed from all their filthiness before they can enter into this king, this earthly kingdom. Ezekiel 37.
here we're back to this land, the land of, or was it, we didn't theologists sometimes kind of times call it Palestinian covenant. But it's about the land. And it's about some people who he's going to use to inhabit the land. The land. God said, is it your 37 verses 15 through? Let's read it all, 28. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, that they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of Israel, and when excuse me, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou now show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the, take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim. And the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand, mine hand. And the sticks where I now write it shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathens, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side. And bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their mm -hmm. idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places where they have sinned and shall cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. What does he need with a replacement? Israel or a covenant church, so-called covenant church. That's so many different denominations. What does he need them for? And David, my servant, should be king over them. And they shall all have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, where your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell there, and even they and their children and their children's children forever. What does he need? A replacement organization. When he says it need, is that his Israel will dwell in the land forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. So he doesn't need a pope. David will be his prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. God has a plan and a purpose. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He has a plan and a purpose for the heaven and for the earth. That water again. It's a good blue. Chapter one. He's going to sprinkle clean water on these people in order for them to enter, occupy this kingdom, this earthly kingdom. Luke chapter 1. And mind you, these people who said they could trace their organization back to John. 
because of John's baptismal ritual. Well, if you adhere to John's baptismal ritual and claim that's the beginning of your organization, your organization, you're teaching people that the baptism that they're performing will prepare you to enter into an earthly kingdom. They see, if it's so, Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 17. There was, in the days of Herod the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all his commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no children, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense, of incense. And there appeared upon him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of his of the incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice in his name. When I read it, I've been thinking about this, what, what he said earlier about the nation Israel had, uh, had, had, had been blasphemed his name. And he, he says that he will sprinkle clean water upon them for his holy name's sake. Now, did, is God saying that he's going to give? Zacharias and Elizabeth a child because did Zacharias prayed for a child and he felt sorry for Zacharias. I'm just doing the commentary. Why did why did he give Zacharias and Elizabeth a child? To make them happy? Or to carry out his plan of purpose? Fourteen and continue. And yet thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice in his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be, shall be turned to the Lord their God. Many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go forth before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I will sprinkle clean water on them before they can enter into this land. So he's creating an agent to begin to carry out this ritual. John the Baptizer. It's Matthew chapter 3. If you're water baptizing today, God says that they're being water baptized to enter into a land because of their filthiness. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. 
In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And that same John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather girdle, girdle about his loins, and his meat with locusts and wild honey. Then went out all Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. I will sprinkle clean water on you, says Jesus. Take care. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits meant for repentance, and think not to say unto uh, say within yourselves, We have Abraham for our father, who I say unto you, that God is able to of these seed, which in these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Still have the word about that. And now also the axe is as laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bring, forth, bring not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. No verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This issue of water baptizing today in these man-made pseudo-Christian organizations, they claim that they're water baptizing because John baptized. And clearly we've seen that that's a lie, what they're claiming. Because if, well, if you're claiming that you're water baptized because John was water baptized, you should be back. You are baptizing people to prepare them to enter into a land. And that land is the mountains of Israel. And this is a baptism of repentance. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Let's start it down. Let's start at 26. 26 to 33. Luke chapter 1, 26 through 33. And in the sixth month, an angel, the angel Gabriel, was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Excuse me. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou, thou that highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed thou thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom shall be a kingdom. I'm sorry. The house of, house of his uh, father Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. John. The gospel of John. 
chapter 1. Gospel of John chapter 1, it started 29 through uh, what? The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God will take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which he is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. One gospel. They were used in Ephesians 4. They claim that, that one baptism is the baptism of the child. That's a cruel lie. Cruel, cruel lie. To tell someone. Let's look at it before we. Ephesians chapter 4. These people are so enchanted. Well, they use, they're not enchanted, the people performing the ritual, including water baptism into all of the ritual. Let me come home with Catholicism on the way to tell me this. One is Pentecostalism. It's not biblical. Their baptism is not biblical. It's a lie. That's what it is. So they'll take a verse from Paul's epistle, specifically Ephesians 4. And it's not even from 1 through 6. Therefore, the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith he is called, with all loneliness, meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit. Even as you are called, the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Back up. Four. There's one body. I don't want to go into this dispensational information because they claim that there's only one church. So they'll take these verses uh, four and five. Verse well starting from, from four, five, and six. And said, there is only one church. When he said there's only one body, but because the body of Christ is the same church in the wilderness, evidently. By their life. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But we read in 311, Matthew 311, there's three baptisms. The baptism, the water baptism of repentance, and the, and the baptism that Jesus performed. The Holy Ghost and with fire. But back to yeah, not back. Let's go to Mark. I don't have it on the board. Mark 16. Concerning water baptism. And 
they're no different than all of, all of these are uh, 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 man-made pseudo-Christian organizations. They use the same method as uh, they have. They use the same method of uh, hermeneutics. They just take certain verses that, that appeal and, and structures their organization out of the Bible and use them to seduce people with. Them. Specifically, they use the water baptism thing. But we clearly and see what God has clearly said about water baptism. But here, I want to point out this, because they only use part of this verse, this narrative, specifically Fourteen through sixteen. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven and sat at me, and embraced him with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. After he was risen, and he said unto them, "It is a gospel that they are going to preach today. They claim that this is the gospel." Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But that gospel is speaking about is the gospel of the kingdom today. If that is so, and you believe that this is your marching order, so called, then shouldn't you believe verses 16, 17, 18, 19, 20? Why would you stop at 16 and not include 17 through 20? Because if you include 17 through 20, you're going to have, what, what, what happened to this information in 17 through 20? Let's just read it. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. But what happened to the sign gifts then? After he got out of the water, he should not only have the, the tongue that they the, the teach in the Bible, but there's other sign gifts that God, Jesus specifically says, that when a person comes out of the water, they will have, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. If you claim that you're speaking in tongues when you babble, you should also be able to cast out devils. Talked about 18. And they shall take up serpents. See, you should have an expectation, because God said it. You should have an expectation of this happening in your life. They should drink dead, uh, uh, any deadly thing that shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You should be able to lay hands on your loved ones and the sick. I'm, I'm speaking of the same things. What they only tell you that you're speaking in tongues. And then you have to go to some kind of tongue talking school or whatever. You just, there's just some ritual that, that you can battle. But what happened to the sign gifts? I happen to, I'm sure you uh, other people have, have seen on the news about the trouble that won uh, $1.3 billion. Powerball, I think it's Powerball, uh, uh, what, you know, the lot I think it was in Seattle or something like that. It's the Buddhist. And when I, and they have to declare, in that state they have to declare, in Washington they have to declare who won. So now I'm not the only one that saw this, this item, this new guy. Item. But I sat there and I said, Whoa, this guy has won a million three a billion three hundred million dollars. And he said he had prayed for it. He had chanted, evidently chanted for this. Uh, an atheist had chanted and you know, Satan is able to perform miracles. But he has been so 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 Disillusioned in his religion, 
Did he? He, I think he just given this organization spent a hundred dollars for the tickets, and they won. But he said that his prayer, evidently his prayer had been answered because he won a million, three hundred million. But the guy's dying of cancer. He stayed for cancer. He prayed for the money rather than praying for his life, his health. And I found that so strange. Not strange, but how powerful. Satan can deceive and keep drumming into a person's hand, head about these hallucinations. And he, he's an atheist, Buddhist. And he prayed, he chanted that he would win, and he won. But what about the millions of Christians who pray and beg and pray, not even for the millions, but just to win a hundred dollar ticket to scratch off and he don't win? And they will pray for the physical healers. But they jump into the water <laughs> because God will like them. But when you get in the water, it has to be healed. Or have somebody, the other guy that got into the water, ask them to lay their hands on you and heal you. That's what Mark said. That's what Jesus said. But the satanic deception, the illusion, God's going to do something special for the individual that's so powerful that they don't care about God as a plan and a purpose from Genesis to Revelation. And he's used different people to care out his plan and purpose. When people fail, he just replaces them with someone else. That's a simple fact. But his plan and purpose. He said, I do not this for your sake, O Israel, but for my holy name's sake. So if he didn't care about Israel, what does he think about the individual? But the con game of a man-made Christianity can flip it. They all they flip it and say, it's about you. And that's the scheme. And we'll expose this. Continue to expose this lab. Father, thank you again for this uh, this information that, that, that when we stand on simply that you're not a, a man that you should lie. And, and continue to look through this information to see how we fit in. It's that simple. And then we can get in on it, to put it more specifically. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.